They're polluting the potato patch with toxic chemicals? That's un-American. Here's a look at the new Super 7 Toxic Crusaders, Toxie. When a prank gone wrong exposes wimpy janitor Melvin Junko to toxic pollution, he's transformed into Toxie, a hideously deformed but superhumanly big and strong mutant who uses his newfound powers to protect Traumaville from pollution and evil aliens alike. This 7-inch highly articulated Toxic Crusader's ultimate figure of Toxie is inspired by his vintage toy based on the early 90s animated series and comes with new interchangeable heads and hands, including a cartoon accurate head, blobby, and multiple other accessories. The made-to-order Toxic Crusader's ultimate figure of Toxie is ready to fight for decency and honor, as well as to protect your collection from toxic plots of Dr. Killamoff. Well, I like to think I'm not one to waste, so the last thing I'll waste is your time. We're going to jump right away to grabbing the tape measure and seeing how tall the brand new Super 7 Ultimate Figures of the Toxic Crusaders Toxie stands. Actually, in fact, I'll just insert one little bit of thing to waste your time. I did actually find this entire wave over on Entertainment Earth. If you haven't had any luck to find these in the wild, you can click the link down below in the video description. That same link, in fact, will also save you 10% on anything that's currently in stock on their site. Back though to measuring Toxie. You're looking at the figure being about six and three quarters of an inch in height, or Toxie's about 16 and a half centimeters tall. And I can't be the only one that thinks that Dr. Killamoff is in cahoots with Cobra. So I'm going to slide over here, Toxie, we're about to have a look at, and we're bringing the G.I. Joe Ultimates Cobra Commander. Has there really ever been a time, a crossover in the comics, where the Toxic Crusaders have had to battle the toxic waste dumping of Cobra? Someone's got to make that happen. You can see in this case, maybe you wouldn't want to have the two on your shelf together. First of all, they're, come, they're from completely two different toy lines, but also as well that Toxic Crusader has a bigger build as well than Cobra Commander here to his left. To his left and all around him, Toxie is surrounded by all the accessories that get packed along with the figure. First, the figure comes included with six pairs of interchangeable hands. First, he has a pair of relaxed hands. The plastic that they've used, first of all, has sort of a pulsating look to it. It looks like as well they've gone in and painted on some of some additional color, so it's not just the green plastic alone. These can, though, be popped out from the sockets. I would have said normally popped out easily, but I've noticed actually with the hands that they were a little harder to remove from the forearms. You change out the hands or, you know, again, just a case of popping them off from the pegs. But there's something about the pegs themselves are really difficult to do. I guess just before we actually do that, the figure as well comes in with punching fists. Punching pollution, perhaps? The hands themselves, again, are molded in the same plastic. But again, like the pegs, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Ideally, though, I would really like to have the figure displayed with gripping hands, just because, again, he has a shield and he also has his mop. But just to show you, though, removing the hands when I first took this guy out of his packaging, and even still, there's something about the pegs. I don't know if they're maybe too big for the hole that's on the, on the end of the forearm, but changing out the hands were a little harder to do. Now, I didn't do this myself. This is maybe something that you may want to do yourself, is just take a few passes with the hairdryer just to soften up the plastic just a little bit. And all of that anyways, I would only want, really want to have the figure with the gripping hands that he comes out of the packaging with anyways, but just to show you how to change out the hands, just again, you pop the hands from the forearms. Let's put back in the one that has the gripping hands. Now, this hand, funny enough, happens to be the one we start with, but it's also the hand that seems to be the most difficult to put back into the forearm. No harm, no foul. I'm just going to ultimately display the figure with these two hands anyways. Because the figure, like I said, has two things that he could technically hold in his hands. The first one being, though, his Toxic Crusader shield. I really like the look of the shield, but I am, though, honestly a little worried by the way this attaches onto the back. You can see that it basically holds together by a pipe. But if you look at the plastic, I can't tell whether this is actually pegged in place. If it was pegged in place, maybe I'd be a little less worried. But if it isn't pegged in place, it almost looks like there's a split on the plastic where it's connecting to the shield. And I'm not even going to attempt Lady Luck by actually just pulling this off because I would worry that that would actually just break it all together. But it looked like, even when I was putting it into his hand, that the plastic looks like it's splitting. I really hope, again, this is plugged in place. This does, though, fit into his hand. It's just a case of, well, choose which hand first of all you want to have the figure displaying it with. But this just fits into his hand. I mean, I haven't put much pressure to it. Now you can kind of even see it right there. See how it's, I mean, it looks like it would, for all intents and purposes, plug in. But again, I just don't want to pull it off in case it actually just snaps the peg completely. Now, he does have a shield. 
On the other side of things, he also has, of course, his trusty mop. I love the way they've also added the additional green on the end of the mop, of course, for dispensing bad pollution bearing bad guys. This mop can also fit into his hand. The mop also does have itself an American flag. There's a little clip at the top and a little clip on the bottom. And that, that just fits in between basically like the silver parts, the silver part that's up here and the silver part that's about what? About two thirds of the way down the, the actual, uh, the actual broom. The flag itself is okay. I mean, the only thing about the flag is it doesn't really stay well in place. Like any time of moving this around, it just seems like the clip, they obviously had to make the clip wide enough so it would be easy to remove. I myself would probably just decide to have them displayed really without the flag. So I guess that's probably one of the reasons why they made the clip a little bit wider. If they made it a little bit closer, you'd probably have a harder time to kind of remove the flag from the broom. By the way, the broom though does fit into his other hand. Just again, you slide this into his gripping hand like that. Or what you can also do too, which I like, is take the broom out, spin the figure around to the back, and located on the back, there's a section to hold the broom. Now, obviously, this means he's going to be a little more empty-handed, but at least there's a place to store the broom. I feel like the broom almost sits a little too high on the top of his body. I'd have to go back and look at the cartoon to see if that's accurate or not. I almost feel as if it should be like right around here. I think almost that's too high because it's not like you can turn it or anything like that. Yeah, you'll you see there's a little peg. We'll get to that more in a moment. But I do like the idea of the broom. I just, I don't, I'm worried really about the shield, honestly, because it just seems like the shield isn't stably attached. Anyways, let's remove those both for right now. The figure as well comes included with his tiny little uh, toxic canisters. I think these are like little waste drum grenades. They all seem to be the same. I'm just going to pick them up so you guys can see. Maybe they're slightly sculpted differently, but they almost they look like they're identical. And you get three of these. Now, again, you can either have these kind of in his hand. You'd have to kind of more take the, the clip and kind of fit it in that way, where it actually kind of looks like he's carrying around a toxic stein. Or what you can also do, too, if you look at the front of his belt, it doesn't really even matter if it's the front. It could be also at the back. There's just enough little sections here that you can actually take the clips, drop, not drop one in the process. You can take the little clips and you fit that just onto his belt. And you can, again, rinse and repeat that times three if you really wanted to. Just fit it onto his belt. As you've already seen, they don't stay really well enough. So any bit of moving a figure around, you're probably going to be just popping these off. And I can see one on the floor, so I'm going to have to retrieve that a little bit later. The last thing that the figure comes also included with outside of his, uh, his interchangeable heads, he actually has three extra heads. Well, he has two extra heads specifically for his neck. And then he has technically one then other head that attaches onto the peg. The figure includes as well, let me just put the figure down here, Blobby. I really like the fact that they actually took the time to include Blobby. He's a really disgruntled little wad of gum. He's not really actually gum, but a nicely detailed looking little figurine here. It does have a little hole on the bottom of this that then you just move basically his head just a little bit out of the way, bring the bandolier a little bit over, and then that just attaches onto the peg. So he can carry around, oh, get that all the way on there. He actually can carry around Blobby if he wants to. Nice little touch. Don't know necessarily if I really want to have Toxie always displayed with Blobby, but I love the idea that Super 7 would have taken the time to include it. Let's just remove Blobby for right now. And then the last thing that the figure comes included with as well is two additional head sculpts. Now, as it is right now, he sort of has, I would consider kind of more the defaulted head. But if you wanted a more cartoon looking head sculpt for Toxie, he also includes this one as well. Just to bring up the other one that we already had a look at, or I guess really we haven't looked at it yet. This one has a lot more bumps across the top of his head, across the front of his face as well. And this one has definitely a little bit more, I guess, cartoon looks to him. I mean, like the head sculpts really between the two, I still like this one a little bit more. To change out the heads, it's just a case of popping off the head from the ball joint. It's a little harder to do, of course. And then we're just going to go, oh, almost drop that one, almost drop that one. going to pop the new head back onto the ball joint. And again, like just the difference between the two, just a little bit more refined features, I feel, on the face for Toxie. Again, I kind of like this one a little bit more. Really, of the three, because I did say there were three after all, the figure also as well includes one that has the bandana. I really like the bandana, honestly, the most. And probably when it comes to displaying this guy, I'm leaning more to either displaying him with this head sculpt or probably the one that has the bandana. Again, changing the heads, just a case of popping the head off the ball joint. Why are we doing this again? Popping the head off the ball joint, popping the new head in place. This one's a little bit harder as well, not only because the, the ball peg hole doesn't seem to be as... Yeah, I have to soften up a little bit more uh, with hot water. But also, I, I would have to worry about putting pressure on the back of the bandana. Because again, he's got the little tied-off ribbon on the back there. For me, at least, my favorite head sculpt. It also helps, too, that it's the same color that he has for the front of his of his shirt. What's left of it, at least. And all the little warts that he has on the side of his body as well match that same sort of orange color. So I'm probably going to be sticking with the head sculpt that has the bandana myself. As for the rest of his body, though, again, he's got some really bright colors happening, really very reminiscent of the original toy line and, of course, the 90s cartoon series. I think the cartoon series, in fact, was very quite short-lived. didn't have the longevity that it had, like, 
to the Ninja Turtles, for example. I think it only may have lasted for only a season. But the colors on him are quite good. I really like the brighter plastics that they've used for the green. In the arms, for example, the arms are a little bit of a different color than it seems for the torso, but it seems to kind of vary as well. Like some of the areas are a little bit more darker green. You've got a little more yellow accents added in there as well. He doesn't have nearly enough of it, I feel, in the torso. So it seems in a way like his arms don't quite jive to the coloring that he has to his torso. His head sculpt looks good in the paint as well as his arms. I just kind of wish a little bit of that color could carry itself over also to the torso. Again, the orange colors work really well for the figure. you got some additional darker colors that have added in there as well for around the area of his joint. Kind of we'll talk more about his articulation more in a moment. Of course, he does have the little brown bandolier there at the top. I guess you could technically take this off. It doesn't look like it attaches to really anything. Just simply slide that over his, of his torso if you wanted to. I, I think it actually adds a little more to the character myself. I would probably just leave it on altogether. But if you wanted to, I suppose you probably could just slide this off. Of course, the coloring on his belt isn't quite the same color. It's kind of more of a darker brownish black. It's kind of more of a medium brown. But overall, like again, like the colors on this guy is really good. The, I really like the way they've painted his pants, for example. You've got the open ripped areas. Again, like all the the very unsightly looking skin that Toxie has. The thing I also really like about the figure, like in the cartoon, he has like little ripped open sections of his shoes where you can kind of see like kind of slimy looking i don't know if i guess that's his toes inside or what's left of his toes at least it kind of actually looks like the shoe has a mouth now of course on this side you've got toxic waste all sort of oozing out the sides of his shoes it's a really fun looking figure though for the articulation on toxie starting first with his head sculpt it's on a ball joint so it rotates the head all the way around you can have the head looking up about that far you can have the head looking down and in between that as well you can also rock it back and forth now it doesn't rock back and forth as much as really it could the arms do rotate all the way around. They hinge out. Essentially, like the bodies are about the same build. I really should have brought in like Thundercats, for example, or even like the older He-Man stuff. All sort of seem to have the same articulation as the Toxic Crusaders. But the arms come out only about that far. You chalk a lot of it up to the sculpting that they added to the shoulders. That does really limit a lot of the additional articulation, I feel, for the shoulders. But again, like you can rotate them all the way around. He has a bicep swivel. Just again, a single hinge on the elbow. Same with the Thundercats. You can also rotate the arms all the way around as well. Now he has a waist swivel. The waist is one of those things where you kind of have to make sure the belt's out of the way. Because when you start to kind of move this, you can kind of feel it's rubbing against the plastic of the belt. He has an upper torso crunch, so you can move it forward this way. You can also move it back about that far. The figure also has splits on his legs provided to us by ball joints. Those are on the inside sections of his thighs. And you can bring the legs forward that far. You can bring them back that far. He has a swivel at the top of the thigh. Again, only possessing a single hinge in the knees. And then he has still the articulation where it counts in the ankles back and forth this way and back and forth this way. Nice ankle rocker. As a side note, just before I forget, the figure, of course, does have pickles in the undersides of his feet. All in all, though, great looking figure. Maybe not one that's going to be hitting all the same marks as, like, say, the Thundercats or the Silverhawks. I think probably there's a bigger fan base, I feel, for that, for those two lines. But Toxic Crusaders, if you like the original Toxic Avenger, for for example, the trauma film, or if you grew up watching this series, as short-lived as it was, the Toxic Crusader was a series that was kind of really weird when you think about it. it was geared towards kids, but... From that, of course, it spawned itself, I think, a very short-lived toy line as well. Now, again, like we, we get much more articulated figures here, courtesy of the folks over at Super 7. And with that as well, get pretty cool-looking accessories. One of my favorites being the fact that, well, even though I'm not going to be displaying it with the figure, the fact that we even get ourselves a little blobby is also a really nice touch on Super 7's part. I don't think you'll ever hear complaints about a company throwing in too many accessories with a figure. And to the credit, really, of Super 7, any of their Ultimates line, whether they've been doing the Toxic Crusader stuff, or even the earlier looked at Thundercats, Silverhawks, you name any one of them. And Super 7 had thrown in more accessories than you could ever really use for a figure. I mean, look at just Toxie alone. Three interchangeable head sculpts. Then he also comes included with Blobby. You can attach onto his shoulder. He comes with the, the mop. He comes with a shield. Not to mention the American flag. There's lots of different ways you can have the figure displayed. For me, I'm not going to really be displaying the figure with the cartoon head sculpt. I'm kind of on the fence as to whether I really want to display the figure either with Blobby on his shoulder. For me, at least, I'm probably just going to go back to the idea of displaying the figure with the headband. As that's my favorite of the three. Maybe with the mop in his one hand. Uh, speaking of his shield, though, you may not notice that the shield is in his hand, but you may notice, though, that the shield is attached onto the back of the figure's body. That same hole that accommodated the mop happens to also be the same size to accommodate the pipe handle for the shield. Going, though, and talking about the shield once again, I am really worried about the longevity of that shield and not splitting the plastic. 
The more I'm looking at, the more I'm thinking it just attached onto the shield with no real plan in mind of ever really removing the two. And just the few times I've actually attached it into his hand, I've noticed that the plastic is starting to separate. If it is the case where it's two separate molded pieces, I don't really understand why Super 7 didn't just mold one thing. Why didn't they just cast the mold for the entire shield instead of molding a shield of molding the pipe part of the shield? and then molding the shield as a separate piece altogether. To me, it, le it leaves the opportunity for that to be destroyed or broken. And I think that if I'm not too careful, that may ultimately happen with the shield itself. Shield looks good. I just don't think it's constructed all that well. I like the look of Toxie. I think overall the colors work quite well. Of course, he's looking more familiar to his cartoon counterpart than maybe what we would see in the live action film. But it so happens to be the case that they're releasing these Super 7 uh, Toxic Crusader figures at in line with the same timing of the new trailer that we just got leaked for, well, I guess it wasn't so much leaked, that was launched for the new upcoming Toxic Crusader, Toxic Avenger movie. Definitely looking forward to seeing that. But though, but going back to the cartoon figures, what do you guys think of this line? Is this something else you could see yourself going down the rabbit hole when it comes to collecting Super 7 stuff. What do you guys think of Toxie? Let me know down below in the comments section. Speaking of also Toxie and speaking of also the Toxic Crusaders, these are available as of right now over on Entertainment Earth's site. That's the same site, in fact, where I actually got the wave for myself. And if you're interested, you can click the link down below in the video description. That link not only will take you directly to the listing of Toxic Crusaders, Toxie, but also that link will save you 10% on anything that's currently in stock over on their site. If you want to do a little bit of shopping for Super 7. What do you guys think again of this figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. But also as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, why not throw it a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you're on board to see the rest of the Toxic Crusader figures, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. Of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.